This is a painting of Danae, who is a mythological figure who is locked up in a brass room underground with a small grated window on top for air and light, till one day Zeus came to her through the grate in the form of a shower of gold, and of that union Perseus was conceived and he'd grow up to kill snake-headed Medusa and rescue the bound Andromeda. This is Artemisia Gentileschi's 1612 painting of Danae. The moment of conception of Perseus as Zeus rains down upon Danae with his golden flood has been a favorite subject of painters since ancient time. I'm a bit enthralled by this early 20th century symboliste Danae by the French painter Lucien Levy Dermer. Here we see Danae literally immersed in Zeus's flood, neck arched back, hand covering her eyes, legs drawn up and exposed. The whole painting suffused with the golden yellow of the flood, and it's one of the few paintings, such as Klimt's done about the same time, where really the subject is Danae's own rapture with the flooding as much hers as that of Zeus's. I like its delightfully abstract quality as it moves away from a literal rendering into a submersive, dreamy vaporousness, allowing the viewer's own transport into Danae's state of rapture and release, which is really what the painting is about. Here's a somewhat similar Danae painting from 1966 by Bernard Perling. Again, as in the Levy Dermer, we have an immersive, almost baptismal flooding, but here we also have a radiant luminosity that feels penetrative and almost spiritual. Also, in both paintings, the huge amount of yellow paint calls attention to the materiality of paint itself, as if the liquid dripping paint is part of Danae's flooding. Usually, a deliberate calling attention of paint as paint itself is something post-impressionists explored a bit in the late 19th century, and it sort of peaked with the abstract expressionism in the 1950s. But here is a Danae by John Mosner from 1640, where we have huge splotches of yellow paint calling attention to itself as paint, but achieving an effect that's an exquisite fit for liquid golden flood falling upon Danae. It's really an uncanny effect as if the artist is literally flinging golden paint upon the canvas and upon Danae. The falling droplets splashing onto her thighs and onto her hand and then dripping from her hand as well. And her expression is quite lovely too. Of course, a lot of painters of Danae made the choice to have Zeus dropping quite literally coins instead of golden droplets. And an iconographic tradition did develop having a serving woman, sometimes almost frantically, scooping up the gold coins in the hem of her dress, imposing sort of additional allegorical subtext about greed. The coin thing finds its most extreme expression in this late 19th century painting by Horace de Calais. That's a lot of money. But I think the coins were actually used to keep the censors a bit at bay by literalizing the narrative. One thing I absolutely love about Danae paintings is that for hundreds of years, it's been the one narrative where painters could paint their subjects in ecstatic states and pass muster in polite society. In a sense, most Danae paintings are sort of double works. One, they exist within an established narrative frame. Here, let me toss some gold at you. I'm Zeus. But look what happens when we start focusing on faces. You're looking straight at female rapture, at least female rapture is conceived by the painters. And that's a pretty amazing thing to be able to paint even during periods of considerable censorship. So just look at these faces. I've deliberately picked works spanning the entire range of time from Renaissance to present day. I don't know anything else in painting quite like this. 
Since just one of the six versions of the painting Titian did around 1550 was immensely popular at the time. And this is by a living painter, Patricia Watwood. I have more to say about this one in a bit. And this is by the turn of the century German fin de siècle symbolist Franz von Stuck, who usually did works about nightmares and dreams. I think this Danae is kind of wild. And the following faces of Danny just kill me a bit in the best of ways. I think these faces are lovely. Then I want to show you some of the truly bizarre Danny paintings. What do you make of that? And how about this? The flood here feels downright industrial, like it's a cold, cold, cold world. But the strangest of all Danae paintings is this one. All I can see is a young woman being shamed and about to be spanked by the family maid for whatever rapture she just got caught experiencing. And this one. I love Patricia Watworth's Danae. I like that finally she is standing tall, and if you look carefully, there seem to be snakes emerging from her hair. Danae's bliss leads to Perseus, leads to Perseus tangling with Medusa's snaky locks. I love how she folds the story back in on itself. And I'll close with Klimt in 1907. I like how many strains of past paintings coalesce in this one, but it is the most intensely dreamy inward Danae ever, giving Zeus a nod, but it's all about Danae and her inward presence and her joy and her rapture and her flooding and her release. If you enjoyed this, watch the Medusa video or Watch the Lee Miller and Man Ray in Paris 1930. And please like and subscribe because I have a lot more interesting videos on the way.